Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie on Tuesday, December the 26th, 2023. Today, I want to talk about Barack Obama. I mean, why not? Um, you know, I've been uh, reading some people's um, views on him and uh, I understand a lot of you aren't particularly fond of him. And, uh, you know, there is a view that actually Barack Obama is running a country. Um, I'm not saying he is running a country, by the way. I'm just telling you that some people think he is, um, that he's the sort of de facto leader of the Democratic Party. Um, I don't know, but um, maybe astrology can give us some idea about how much power um, Barack Obama actually has at the moment. Um, you know, logically, you wouldn't have thought he had much power. I mean, it's a long time since he left the White House. Um, so why should he have any power? On the other hand, his name did come up um, with reference to um, Claudine Gay, the president of Harvard. And um, there was a story um, that he is he has apparently been putting pressure on Harvard not not to fire her. I think he takes a view that uh, if Claudine Gay, the, the president of Harvard, were to go, that would, you know, cause, um, that would cause major damage, not just, you know, not just about her losing her job, but um, it might have um, a larger impact. Um, so I perhaps want to consider that, you know, we don't really know when Claudine Gay is, is born. I, I mean, her English Wikipedia still says that she's, um, I think, either born in 1969 or 1970, and it won't commit itself. Um, but uh, the date, August the 4th, 1970, keeps coming up for her. And uh, I thought that was interesting because Barack Obama is born on August the 4th, uh, 1961. So these two people um, share the same birthday. So, I mean, obviously different years. Um, so um, perhaps they have some affinity for each other. So is he trying to um, exert his influence um, or assert his influence um, in terms of Harvard or does it go go beyond that? Um, is, he, is he really running a country? Um, and can we actually look at his horoscope and kind of get an idea about how strong his position actually is at the moment? Um, and how um, it might change in the future. So these are the things I want to look at um, today. Um, but uh, before I do that, um, I want to look at the astrology and the I Ching um, for today, which is Tuesday, uh, December the 26th, 2023. It's um, Boxing Day. So let's, um, let's look at the, um, the astrology for today. Top right, of course, that's, um, that's Barack Obama. Um, oh, I've cut off his chin there. Let's, uh, let's bring his, let's put his chin in there. Okay, there we go. There we go. There you can see him. Um, so there's Barack Obama, top right. Um, but, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's look at, um, the astrology for, for today. Um, main thing, um, I suppose, is that uh, the moon goes into cancer. Um, the moon goes into cancer London time at uh, quarter past three in the afternoon. So New York time, that's 10.15 in the morning. Um, Los Angeles time, that would be 7.15 in the morning. So really, if you're in the Americas, the moon is in cancer pretty much um, all day. But uh, you know, if you're in Western Europe, sort of the afternoon and evening, um, the moon will be in Cancer. If you're in um, Australia, New Zealand, the um, moon is in Gemini all day. So quite how you experience the moon does depend on um, where you are. But the movement of the moon from Gemini to Cancer um, is important because they're two very different signs, um, Gemini and Cancer. You know, Gemini is um, an air sign. Um, 
in fact, when the moon is in Gemini, it's it's the only planet in an air sign. Because as you can see, there's no, you know, the air signs are Gemini, Aquarius and Libra. So we only had the moon in Gemini um, on Christmas Day. Uh, but now, now it's, it's, it's moving out. It's, it's, all that air has gone. Um, so when the moon goes into Cancer, uh, the the emphasis is going to move away from sort of gossip, idle thought, speculation, um, analyzing, thinking, that kind of thing, and it's going to become um, a lot more emotional, especially as the moment the moon goes into Cancer, we start the run up um, to the full moon. Now, if you are in um, if you're in Eurasia, um, the the full moon is in um, happens tomorrow on Wednesday. Um, but if you're in the if you're in the um, Americas, well, New York, um, I think the new moon is at uh, seven thirty three p.m. But yeah, so but the moment the moon goes into Cancer, we get the run up. Uh, we get the run up to the full moon. Um, and you know i've already discussed this full moon um but as far as specifically how it's going to work out today uh i mean the moon in cancer is applying not just to the opposition of the sun but it's also applying to a sextile of jupiter so there may be a certain amount of good fortune there um and it, and as i said uh when looking at the full moon it's like when we realize the truth, um, we can make changes to our life um, that can be um, extremely fortunate. Um, so think about the truth today, um, you know, particularly if you're in the, in the, um, in the Americas, um, when you do experience the full moon today. Um, OK, it's in the evening, but what are you being shown um okay if you're in los angeles actually the full moon is late afternoon um but uh, anyway i thought i'd better correct myself there so yeah if you're in the americas yeah the you should be able to see the world for what it is and make appropriate changes um if you're in um eurasia well that will be something that you have you, that you'll experience um tomorrow so that's the full moon um if you if you look at um, if you look at yesterday's video on for Christmas Day, I did have a section on the full moon when I specifically looked at, looked at that. Um, so I don't really want to completely um, repeat myself here. Um, aside from that, we see that um, Mercury and Venus are thirty there's mercury twenty five thirty nine uh sagittarius venus twenty six twelve scorpio mercury and venus are semi sextile uh they are um um thirty degrees apart now some astrologers regard the semi sextile as being being a fortunate aspect, perhaps because the sextile is a fortunate aspect. So if you, you would think, well, a semi-sextile must also be fortunate. Well, not necessarily. Um, you know, the problem is that when you've got a semi-sextile aspect, you've got two planets that are in adjacent signs, and adjacent signs tend to be very different from each other. Venus in Scorpio, Mercury in Sagittarius. Sagittarius is a far sign. Sagittarius is quite tactless, noisy, likes to get attention. Venus is sort of emotional and brooding. So some of us might sort of get um, get upset by what people are saying, because there are going to be some loud mouths um, if you're socializing. Um, uh, others are going to find perhaps other people's um, brooding emotionality rather unnerving so there is this clash between venus and scorpio which is kind of how we want to relate and mercury and sagittarius is how we communicate uh, so how we relate and how we communicate um, may not um, may not really be on the same wavelength and uh, 
people's um, tactless comments could really um, spoil everything. So it's going to be really difficult, I think, to um, bring these two energies together. And matters are made worse by the fact that uh, today the sun is making a sesquiquadrate to Uranus. So there's the sun in Capricorn making an 135 degree aspect to Uranus. So the sun is our self and Uranus is about revolutions, um, about uh, disturbance. Um, it's about things happening unexpectedly. So there may, may be unexpected events which um, disturb our peace of mind, but it might be us creating the unexpected events. So we can't expect everything to go to plan. Um, so if we're trying to organise things, arrange events for today, it's it's quite important to be flexible, um, to have um, to have a standby plan, um, just in case. Uh, you know, you never know who you're going to meet, who you're going to come across. Um, you know, when we see that Mars, there's Mars and Pluto. Mars is exactly 36 degrees from Pluto. Now, 36 degrees um, is um, an important angular separation because 36 degrees is um, a tenth of the circle because the circle is 360 degrees. So 36, deg 36 degrees is a tenth of the circle. So it's, um, so it's uh, a semi-quintile. So a quintile is 72 degrees. That's a fifth of the circle. So, yeah, um, the decal, which you can also call a semi-quintile, same thing. Um, so what does that mean? Um, well, as I say about um, the quintile aspects, you know, the five series of aspects, um, if you've got a quintile, um, the fifth harmonic, uh, it's all about style. Five is a, is a man-made number. And so if you've got a, a planet, two planets, which are a tenth of the circle apart, well, ten is five times two. So two is a number of struggle, Five is the number of style. So Mars, Decile, Pluto is a struggle to have a particular style, the struggle to have a Mars-Pluto style. So there are going to be some people, Mars-Pluto is about power. Mars is an aggressive planet. Pluto is about power. It's about the struggle to assert oneself and the struggle to influence the people around us, um, the struggle to be manipulative even. So um, who's being manipulative? I mean, maybe you. Maybe you are struggling to be manipulative, struggling to have an influence on the world around you, struggling to influence all the people who you're meeting today. Or it just may be someone else. Someone else is trying to influence you. Um, someone else is trying to do your head in, um, trying to get you to do something perhaps you don't want to do. Uh, so bear that in mind. Of course, what you might have is you might have two people both struggling to um, assert themselves and they might clash. So then you could have, then you could have real problems. Um, and there's another five series aspect between Mercury and uh, Mercury and Uranus. So there's Mercury, um, there's Uranus. They are 144 degrees apart. So 144 is 2 times 72. So that's two fifths of the circle, 144 degrees. Um, that's not a struggle. It's just plain five. Um, so the fiveness of Mercury Pluto is, you know, when people communicate, they're going to attempt to have a style that is um, quite sort of explosive and unique and original. People are going to be very, very anxious to be original um, in terms of what they say. But you might notice that some people are trying too hard to be original. You know, originality, you've either got it or you haven't. Um, and if you, you know, if you try too hard to be original, then you come over as being a fake. Um, but nonetheless, watch out for that. Um, people, people may be saying things 
um, Mercury, uh, saying things which are quite explosive, Uranus, in a deliberate attempt to create um, a particular impression. So that's the picture um, for today. Um, I mean, I think it could be it could be quite a difficult day because, you know, we've got the build up to the full moon. I mean, even if you're in Eurasia and you don't actually have the full moon today, nonetheless, you know, the moon is applying to an opposition of the sun. So there is going to be a feeling that uh, something is coming to our head, that, we're, you know, we're going to have to deal with the truth, that things can't go on like this forever. Um, and that uh, a, some kind of change is, is required. Um, and, you know, with that sun sesquicodrate um, Uranus, indeed that whole full moon, when it becomes exact sesquicodrates Uranus or semi-square sesquicodrates Uranus, um, we should expect... Um, um, we should expect the unexpected... Um, events happening which we really um hadn't hadn't planned for okay so that's a broad picture for today so what i want to do now is i want to go through the um through the 12 signs now like yesterday i haven't scripted this um i don't i i do i am going to script in future but just for today i didn't get it together to script um my forecast of the 12 signs. Uh, so that means I'm probably going to spend longer for me on each sign um, than usual. So um, these are my forecasts um, for my star sign forecast for today, which is um, December, Tuesday, December the 26th, 2023. Aries. There is um, a certain clash building up today for you. Um, on one hand, I think you are going to want to want to spend time uh, in your own space, uh, perhaps in your own home. Um, after all, the moon is moving into um, quite um, a secretive, um, introspective sector of your solar chart, but there is going to be pressure on you uh, to keep a high, to have a high profile. Maybe there'll be a pressure to do something relating to work or maybe to socialise. And you're, it's going to be very difficult for you to balance this out. What do you do? Can you please everyone? Um, answer is um, you can't and you have to do what is right for you. Um, and I think... Um, what is right for you is to actually look after yourself. Um, I think time spent um, in your own home, somewhere where you feel safe, where you can perhaps um, relax after a maybe exhausting Christmas, um, um, is probably um, the right thing uh, for you to be doing. Um, nonetheless, I do understand that some Arians may feel that they do have to find some way of asserting themselves, even if they don't actually want to meet people face to face. Um, so if you're, you know, talking to people on the phone or Internet, text messages, you might find yourself playing games, playing power games. It just just can't help yourself. You just might find yourself doing it. Um, but you have to ask yourself whether that is um, really um, appropriate. Taurus, um, I think uh, it should be um, an okay day, um, provided you you do things your way. Um, you know, you might want to um, you know you might want to visit some people. It's a good day for short short um, uh, short visits particularly later in the day um you know don't, you don't have to travel hundreds of miles you may just be able to you know maybe you just need to travel a hundred yards that might be um that might be enough but you do have to consider who who are you going to meet today um because you there's a danger that you meet people who just really um annoy you um you know you have 
a particular way of doing things. You know, Taurus is quite um, quite a fixed sign, which puts a great premium on stability. And there's a danger that you meet people who just really annoy you. They keep changing your mind. Uh, they keep changing your schedule. Uh, and to make matters worse, they make a lot of a lot of noise. So um, when you're on your rounds, um, be careful who you meet. Be be careful who you talk to, because some people um, could uh, could drive you drive you around the bend. Gemini. Gemini, you do have to um, consider other people's sensitivities. Um, I do understand, Gemini, um, that uh, you have got a lot to say. I mean, Gemini's have always got a lot to say. Um, but you also have to consider what is, what, what is the quality of your statements actually going to be like? Because there's a danger that you talk nonsense today. You say things which are inappropriate. Um, you don't that you don't um, fully take into account um, other people's other people's feelings. So you really do. Um, you really have to do have to watch out there because you know not everyone is going to be on your wavelength. Not everyone is going to understand why you said what you said, and. Gemini, if you're not careful, you could cause um, you could cause offence. Um, one other thing, Gemini, uh, there is a full moon coming up, which does affect the finance axis of your solar chart. Um, you might have a realization about money, um, which could be um, which could be um, quite important. Cancer. Okay, the moon is moving into your star sign. Um, yeah, especially if you're in the Americas. So, as, you know, as I've discussed, it depends ex depends exactly where you are. But you know, if, if you're in New York, the moon moves into your star sign at ten fifteen um, in the morning. Um, if you're in London, it, it's it's later, five you know, quarter past three in the afternoon. Um, but you know, the moon moving into your star sign is obviously a good thing because the moon. Um, the moon rules cancer. Um, you are going to feel a certain sense of um, certain sense of grounding and um, emotional stability, um, that kind of thing. Um, but the trouble is that the moment it moves into the moment the moon moves into cancer, there's a full moon, and you know Cancerians are really very sensitive to the full moon. Um, the full moon. Um, you know, can have a big influence on your moods. So, yes, you're in a strong position, but um, because there's a full moon, your moods might sort of, you know, move very quickly. You know, one moment feeling happy, relaxed, next moment feeling quite tense and thinking about what you need to do, um, thinking about material pressures, that kind of thing. Um, so do do watch out for that. But ideally, um, you will sort of accept um, the tension in your life, not 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 regard it as a threat, but perhaps re regard the tension as being something which is um, indicating um, some, you know, some f fundamental truths, um, because after all, full moon is about showing you the truth and and I should also say that the moon, when it goes moves into Cancer, is starting to apply to a sextile of Jupiter, and I think that should be very good for Cancerians. If you can, if you can get through the tension, uh, you may actually see um, you may actually see um, an important opportunity. Leo, the Sun, your ruler, is applying to a trine of um, Jupiter. Um, as it was um, yesterday, uh, but it's now getting really quite strong. Um, so I do see um, real opportunities here, and I don't know what you're doing today, whether you're taking today off or whether you're working today. Um, but you know, if you are working today, I think you can, it, you can have you know a great time. Um, you can be really successful. Um, okay, I understand that maybe 
you know, Boxing Day is not the busiest day of the year, but um, given whatever chances come your way, I think you should be able to make the most of it. So if you do have the option of going into work, then I would say take the option. Um, you know, this is because, you know, Jupiter is in your solar 10th house relating to career. Jupiter is a planet of good luck. It's been there for months. And um, the sun is in the... Um, in a, in, a house, in, a, in a sector of your solar chart is in Capricorn relating to getting down to details, hard work and that kind of thing. So, yeah, you can have, you can have, um, you know, you can have a really successful day um, if that's what you want. But that doesn't mean to say that you have to spend all your time socialising. Uh, you know, especially if you're in, um, in the Americas, you, you can... You can do some useful work, but you can do it alone. You don't have to talk to anyone, I don't think. Uh, it's not not necessarily, you know. So particularly if you're working at home, uh, I think that's that's perfect. You you can get into your get into your little world, your isolated little world, and do something um, do something really amazing. So that that that's good. Um, Virgo. Um, now Virgo. Uh, Traditionally, uh, you know, the big stereotype of Virgo is a sign that uh, is really into details. Um, details are great, aren't they? But you have to be careful how you express that when talking to people. Um, because there is a danger that you start to obsess about things which may actually not be very important. And... You know, you might sort of make a big fuss about certain details. And because of this big fuss, um, you might upset people. You know, many people are in a sort of relaxed Christmassy mood still, even though it's the 26th. And um, they don't really want to hear someone talk about, you know, material stuff, particular detail, perhaps details about money or appearance, um, you know, whether there's some, whether whether a hair is out of place, uh, I don't know, the kind of details might people might focus, might focus on with appearance. People don't want to hear that. So just because something bothers you doesn't necessarily mean, um, doesn't necessarily mean that you have to talk about it. You, you can just... Um, have your own opinions and um, keep quiet about it. But uh, if you can um, um, discipline yourself in that way and just go with the flow, then it can be a great day. And um, from a social perspective, I think you can meet new and interesting people. Um, just just keep it light. And it's not a day for, for making criticisms uh, unless you really feel um, that it's necessary. Libra. Librans, um, you know, they like harmony. Uh, most Librans like harmony. There is a sort of a small minority of Librans that really like to sort of upset the apple cart. But uh, you're going to want everything to be socially uncomplicated today. I think that's going to be really quite important. Um, yet you might find that that's not too easy because some people may embarrass themselves and you're going to be very focused I think on things like today I think you're going to be quite focused on decorum um, on, on behavior um, what is the right behavior in a particular situation and I think you might observe that certain people are um, behaving um, inappropriately um, so watch out for that um, I should also say that, um, you know, we've got this run up to the full moon. Um, OK, the full moon is either could be this afternoon if you're in Los Angeles, this evening if you're in New York, um, tomorrow morning or perhaps later. I'm not sure uh, if you're tomorrow morning at some time if you're in Eurasia. Um, and so it's a time when uh, you might want to put a bit of effort into into your work if you can um because you know when the moon moves into cancer um it uh does 
have an impact on your career because can, in, from in the Libran solar horoscope, um, the moon in Cancer is about is about work and career and how you move forward in life, and that might be something you want you want to do. At the same time, you're going to be aware of all the things that might be holding you back. Uh, for example, there might be might be pressure from your family or or domestic responsibilities, and you're going to have to juggle those around and work out um, work out um, how best to um, deal with the situation. Scorpio. Um, I think uh, it's going to be an okay day. Um, I think you're going to be sort of uncomfortable with um, the grind of daily existence. Um, And I think you might be thinking for thinking about um, maybe transcending it you know transcendence could be quite important um you know remember um i think it's yeah it's sort of alistair in alistair crowley and i think it's in the book of thoth talking about the tarot he said that there were three aspects of the sign scorpio um you know you've got the scorpion uh the snake and the eagle and the eagle is the highest aspect of scorpio um the eagle doesn't um sting itself to death in frustration and like the scorpion it doesn't hide under rocks like the snake the eagle soars high so that it can see um the it can see the big get the big view and also soar above other people and their and their petty concerns and emotions and whatever and so that's perhaps what you should be um what you should be doing today getting allowing yourself to see to see the big picture and uh if you can do that um then you know things are going to be great um what you should probably avoid um is getting involved in power struggles you know i've already mentioned um that uh you know mars your ruler mars is well mars is decile pluto 336 degrees pluto and i think you know scorpio you may be tempted to make a big effort to be a control freak today um you know you're gonna you might be concerned about your own power and how you're asserting it so you how you're asserting it uh you could but i'm not sure if that's the right thing to do as i said think of the eagle just um rise above the whole thing and you know try to try to get some broader and perhaps um spiritual um perspective uh, Sagittarius. Okay, Sagittarius, uh, it's time to be, um, I think, a little more serious. Um, you know, I know, I do understand um, that, you know, Mars and Mercury are in your star sign um, and um, that you, uh, you know, you want the world to hear you. Um, that's natural. That's, 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 that's Sagittarius wanting attention. Um, but, uh, you know, the moon has just gone into, the moon's gone in, going into cancer and we've got a full moon and that's a serious thing. And I think, um, there are certain details and I, I'm not really talking about material details. I'm more talking about emotional details that you perhaps need to start to focus on. You know, you, you, you can't just be hung up on, you know, what you can see in front of you. You've got to look at the the sort of the emotional environment um and that requires a certain amount of delicacy and yes of course there's going to be a temptation for you to say what's on your mind and to interrupt uh yeah that's that's going to be there but i don't think that's the right approach um i think you need um a bit of a bit of subtlety um today capricorn well, we do have this run up to a full moon. Um, as you know, the sun is in Capricorn. The sun's been in Capricorn for um, a few days now, ever since, obviously, by definition, since the winter solstice, if you're in the northern hemisphere. And now we have the moon um, making an opposition to to the sun in Capricorn. Um, in other words, the full moon, the can- cancer full moon, which has a 
direct impact on your star sign, the full moon. In other words, across the main axis of your solar chart. Um, yes, you are in a strong position, but you do have to consider other people. You know, the moon, when it goes into cancer, is in your opposite sign. Um, you know, other people have, um, you know, have sensitivities which you certainly need to take into account. Um, so don't, you know, don't automatically try to do everything your way. Take some time um, to um, listen. And because if you can do that, um, you could benefit in, you know, in quite an important way. Um, you know, the sun, while moving in, while the sun, while moving through Capricorn, is after all making a trine aspect to Jupiter. The moon is making a trine aspect to Jupiter, and you know, the Jupiter is currently in quite a fortunate aspect, a fortunate sector of your solar chart. So, consider how other people can benefit you, because I'm I'm pretty sure they can. But you've got to give them, um, you've got to give them a chance. Aquarius. Aquarius, um, okay, it's not, it's not a particularly um, interesting day. Um, you know, in the past, you've had your fun, um, you found ways to be creative, but now you, you may be feeling that uh, things are a little, little boring, um, a little bit routine, a bit mundane. Um, that might be that might be getting you down a bit, but uh, you know I wouldn't worry about it too much. I think today there is there is work to be done. Um, you know if you have you know recently been creative, then you have to start thinking. Okay, it's great being creative, but at a certain point you actually have to um, turn creativity into something real, and that takes hard work. And so maybe that's your task uh, today, um, maybe tomorrow as well, to, to, you know, to take your talents and to sit down and work out how you can actually make use of those talents, how you can actually put them into action. And in the first instance, it will be boring. Um, but really, um, it's a question of, um, I think, of self-discipline. And finally, there is um, Pisces. Um, now, I think it's actually going to be um, quite a good day for Pisces, um, you know, particularly if you're in the Americas, um, because, you know, you're going to have the moon going into Cancer and, you know, Cancer is a water sign. Pisces is a water sign. Um, you're going to feel that uh, things are really starting starting to flow. Um, and, you know, when the moon goes into Cancer, it also makes a trine aspect of the planet Saturn, which is, um, which is moving through your star sign. So I think that um, you can enjoy yourself. Um, you know, you can have fun. I don't know how you want to have fun. It's kind of up to you within reason. Um, but you can do so in a fairly disciplined kind of way. So... If you have a, a hobby that you enjoy doing, um, you can you can just get on with it. Um, other people, okay. Some people might not be too happy about it, but it's you know that shouldn't really matter because you know when the moon is in Cancer uh, in in the Piscean solar horoscope, it's it's all about you and it's all about um, your creativity. Um, and you know matters are made um, are made even better by the fact that uh, the moment the moon goes into Cancer, it's actually making a mutual reception by exaltation with Jupiter. Jupiter is your ruling planet. Um, Jupiter's in Taurus, which is in the exaltation of the moon. Um, the moon is in in Cancer, the exaltation of Jupiter. So that is really fortunate. So in fact, Pisces. Um, I think things can go really well for you. Uh, as I said, especially if you're in the Americas. But even if you're not in the Americas, well, it's just going to 
the good luck is going gonna, is gonna to happen, but perhaps later in the day or into tomorrow. So overall, Pisces, um, you know, I think it, it should be should be a good day. OK, so that's the day from a point of view of um, astrology. Uh, and now I want to move to the um, now I want to move to the I Ching. Uh, so um, I asked the question, um, you know, what is Tuesday going to be like uh, for people watching this video? And the first hexagram I got was hexagram 10, treading. So treading relates to the tiger's tail. Um, you know, it's like, um, I don't know, imagine you're walking, uh, you're walking down the corridor of your home and th there's a tiger in the corridor, um, you know, just lying down. And, you know, what do you do? Um, well, you have to tread carefully. Um, because if you tread on tiger's tail, you might get bitten. Um, although in sort of I Ching world, um, getting bitten is not necessarily the end of the world. Um, you can survive being bitten by a tiger, apparently, um, in that symbolic I Ching way of looking at things. Um, but what it's talking about um, is an issue or a problem that we have to deal with today. Uh, it could be tricky. Um, we're going to have to tread carefully. Uh, kind of makes sense. We've built up to a full moon. You know, full moons are often pretty unstable times. Things could go anyway. Um, people are getting tense. Uh, so, you know, when dealing with other people, we need to exercise a bit of caution. Uh, we can't just say the first thing that comes to mind. Um, we have to tread carefully. Um, so that is um that is really um very important um so don't you know don't you know don't you know don't rush in um there's certainly a temptation to rush in um but if we rush in we try to solve a problem immediately we're going to mess it up and we'll get the tiger will bite us and it might be a problem so yeah so tread carefully now there are two moving lines uh the fifth line moves and the sixth line moves um now the fifth line moving um is is kind of um, a bit mixed um and it kind of depends on the translation you read um now one approach to the fifth line Wilhelm says, well, OK, it's about being being resolute. You know, we must we've got something to do. We've got a problem to sort out and we must sort it out. We must obviously tread carefully, but that's what we must do. Now, Greg Winkup, in his translation of the I Ching, um, he's a little more negative about it. Uh, he, he talks about torn shoes we you know we're not the shoes we're wearing remember this is about treading so if you need if you're treading you need to be wearing the right pair of shoes you certainly don't want a pair of shoes that is damaged um so there might be an interpretation of this saying we don't actually have the resources to deal with the problem um so think about it um, so if you are dealing with a difficult problem, you know, whether it's a social problem, a person, something you're trying to fix, whatever it is today, whatever that problem is, it might be a trivial problem, but whatever it is, um, just ask yourself, have you really got what it takes? Consider your shoes. I mean, I don't mean literally your shoes, but metaphorically, are they, are they in poor shape? Um, have you really got what it takes um, to um, to deal with the matter? Um, and if you haven't got what it takes to deal with the matter, then take a step back. Um, you know, get another pair of shoes. <laughs> um, then we've got the top line moves. And top line is not, is, well, the, the Wilhelm translation 
is saying, well, it's completion. We've done it. We've sorted out the problem. Um, whereas um, the Greg Winkup translation is, he's kind of saying we've sorted out the problem, but he's saying, well, we've, we've gone as far as we can, but it's now time to come back. So there's a certain sense of retreat. And so I'm, maybe he's, he's right on that. Um, so we're dealing with a problem. We, we do what we can. We understand our limitations. And then we, we come back. We retreat. And we retreat um, in one piece. Um, OK, this hexagram number 10, treading, um, it does change because we've got two moving lines. Um, and it changes to um, the marrying maiden. Um, so the marrying maiden is about a maiden who is very keen to get married, and she's in a hurry to get married, and this is not appropriate. Um, now, applied to the real world, um, the advice here is... Um, don't be in a hurry. There's a big temptation to be in a hurry. You know, we've just come out of this hexagram, the treading, where we've we've been in a situation where we were supposed to deal with this situation, you know, where we, we were supposed to be really careful. Um, we don't want to sort of feel that we've sorted something out and then just rush ahead. That's not the right approach. Um, so when we move to the next stage, we have to take it slowly. Um, we must be happy with maybe small gains, and because if we if we rush, things could go wrong. So just don't be in a hurry to achieve your goals. Um, take it slowly, and if you haven't finished by the end of the day, it doesn't matter because tomorrow's another day. Maybe maybe tomorrow you'll be in a stronger position and you can finish what you're trying to what you're trying to achieve today. Um, so. From, an, from I Ching's perspective, um, it can be an OK day, provided we're careful. And I think, I think that kind of fits with the astrology, um, you know, the full moon. Um, you're dealing with two people or two situations, two principles that are opposed with each other. Um, also, I mentioned the Mercury semi-sextile Venus, you know. We can't just say what we like because we're going to upset people. Um, by the same token, um, we can't be overly emotional, overly brooding, because that will just, you know, that will, that will also upset people. So we have to get the right, we have to, you know, get the right balance there. Okay, so that's the I Ching. And now I want to look at Obama's horoscope. Um, now, uh, I don't know. The re as I said, the only reason I'm looking at Obama's horoscope is because, you know, I just heard it said, <laughs> that, you know, this this theory that he's actually the the de facto um, head of the Democratic Party. I don't know who said that. I can't remember. But uh, but he's controlling the country. I, I'm not. As I said, I'm not saying that's the case. Um, but uh, yeah. So. Um, so looking at looking at Obama's chart, um, here's Obama's chart. I mean, I've looked at it before. Um, I mean, he has, um, you know, he has that Uranus on a descendant. He, you know, Biden's got Uranus on a descendant. You know, that is a reminder of... Um, and of course, the USA has got Uranus on a descendant as well. Um, you know, that is a reminder of um, the chaos that he's caused in the past, um, particularly with foreign affairs. Um, I think in terms of domestic affairs, you know, I, I, I'm, I, I think, you know, he... If, you know, for example, he got in the Affordable Care Act and that there was a sense in which people thought he might be able to sort of heal America's divisions. America is, of course, as divided as ever. Um, so I don't really particularly have a view on domestic on his domestic agenda. But I mean, obviously, from a sort of foreign affairs perspective, 
that he was not a good president. Um, I, of course, he inherited a lot from George Bush Jr. So he had to, do, you know, George Bush Jr. Uh, got involved in Iraq and Afghanistan. And so uh, and kind of um, Barack Obama didn't really have much choice on that. But, uh, you know, if you look at what happened under Obama with Uranus on the descendant, he um, he didn't get out of Afghanistan. Um, he completely messed up the Middle East. Um, of course, it was Hillary that messed up the Middle East, wasn't it? But then, you know, he should have um, reined her in. Um, but, uh, yeah, and you had his intervention, America's intervention in Syria, um, which caused, you know, absolute chaos, what America did in the Middle East and Syria, of course, Libya. Uh, the refugee crisis uh, was massively exacerbated by Obama's intervention in Syria. And of course, hundreds of thousands of people um, died. Um, so it's kind of amazing that Obama was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, I think he was awarded it just you know, just as, he, as soon as he became president, isn't that right? Um, so that's his Uranus on the descendant. Um, so he was kind of playing out, um, playing out the United States. That's what the United States does. Um, so yes, we know that in the past, um, certainly from a foreign policy view, he he was a bit of a disaster, even more of a disaster than George Bush Jr. Um, then a lot of a lot of U.S. presidents are a foreign policy disaster. So I don't think he's, there's anything special there. Um, so um, there is a view, though, that he's 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 still around. He's still um, he's still having an impact. So how would we go about? Um, ascertaining whether or not he was having an impact is he is he really into his is he into is he really into this sort of life beyond presidential death um well you know one one thing that's going on um in um 2024 is that pluto um is moving into aquarius pluto goes into aquarius um at the end of next month and uh, Pluto is aspect again next month is going to be aspecting um, Obama's Jupiter. Um, now Pluto Jupiter, the Pluto Jupiter contact is about the great desire for self improvement, um, and you know he's got Jupiter opposition Mercury. So I think that Pluto hitting his Jupiter opposition his Mercury. Um, could have a big influence on him um, now that might of course just relate to whatever else he's doing in his life politics isn't the only thing he's interested in um, but Pluto Jupiter is it can be or it can be about power um, and I suppose if you're Obama you are thinking about your legacy you don't want things to happen which might um, might upset your legacy and so that might have an impact on it so with Pluto um, conjunct his Jupiter and opposition his Mercury, um, then th that might really incline him to assert himself and perhaps use um, whatever influence he's got. You know, Pluto, M Pluto transiting Mercury, that is the propagandist. That is the someone using their powers of communication um, to to influence people. So, this might be what he is, um, what he's about to be doing. Um, now, I'm not saying that uh, it's always going to be easy. Um, Saturn is in Pisces and, you know, he's got the moon in Gemini. Um, he's got the moon in Gemini and um, Saturn will be um, square his moon in Gemini. Uh, so... That could that could be tough. I mean, I think it's 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 going to be um, you know maybe difficult for him. But he's you know notice how he's got Moon square Pluto. Um, moon square Pluto is very focused on power, and so I think that with Saturn 
opposition Pluto, square his moon. It's frustrating for him, but I think that I think that might encourage him um, to um, assert himself and to um, make his you know try to make his position um, known. Uh, for example, to the administration, um, and what you know, we we already have seen if you know if the sources are correct that he's you know he's trying to um influence harvard perhaps you know we've heard the story that he's trying to that he's taking action to tr or trying to persuade people to keep um claudine gay um in her position as president of harvard so why has he done that i understand he has a connection with harvard because i think he went to harvard law school um but maybe he sees it not just as being an internal Harvard matter, but something something bigger than that. And as I said, Claudine Gay, assuming the internet is correct, um, is born. There's her chart. She's born on, I believe, she's born on August the fourth, nineteen seventy. And of course, um, Obama is born on um, August the fourth, nineteen sixty one. So maybe that August the fourth, you know, there's there's a, maybe there's some special link. Maybe he feels um, uh, just compelled to do something to keep her in her position, um, but he might be worried ab about the wider implications um, of her um, of her losing her job. Now, further evidence that um, he may be about to be considering how he can assert himself is provided by his um, solar arc directions. Now remember solar arc directions um, are when you move every planet in the house in the, in the chart by one degree. Um, so he's now 63 years old so you would 60 sorry 62 years old he'll be 63 in um, he'll be 63 in August. Um, so you move all the planets in the chart by one degree and you see what aspects they ma they make so um if we look at his solar arc directions um for now uh this is his solar arc directed chart so you see he was born as a uh as he was um born a leo but uh you move his sun just over 60 degrees and it moves into Libra. And then we can um, do a comparison of his natal chart and his solar arc chart. Now, look at his solar arc um, midheaven. A solar arc midheaven is at 29 degrees, 27 Capricorn. Um, now, that means that Pluto... But transiting Pluto at the moment is moving towards a conjunction of his solar arc midheaven. Um, and I think this may be a time where Obama feels that uh, he really feels, yeah, but he really needs to assert himself, perhaps in a political sense. OK, it might be about some other aspect of his business and career or whatever. But I, I think he he's he is getting a sense of his own power at the moment and furthermore the midheaven is about to actually move into aquarius uh, so in six months time so in june about june july his solar arc directed midheaven will move into aquarius and of course when it goes into aquarius it starts to make a conjunction to his natal jupiter and so if your solar arc midheaven is on your natal Jupiter, that's very career orientated. Um, this is not about some retiring president um, drifting off into obscurity. Not at all. Um, this is someone who is, I think, really going to um, going to want to assert themselves. Another point to remember, point to look for is point to look at um, is his uh sun um his his solar arc directed sun so his solar arc directed sun is at 13 6 minutes libra at the moment 
So his solar arc directed sun is actually moving towards a semi square with the mid heaven. Um, so this semi square to the mid heaven means, um, I mean, it is a semi square. A semi square is a kind of a hard aspect, um, a difficult aspect, and I think there's a certain sense of pressure to achieve something um, or or to fix something i think i think fixing something um might be really more what it's about um you know he has his um he has his mid heaven um let me just look at his mid heaven i there was a midpoint that i thought that i saw that his mid heaven was on uh his mid heaven sorry about this um his mid heaven uh, i'm not going to um yeah he's got his mid heaven on the uranus chronos midpoint um now i'm not going to go into put the chronos up on the chart but um if he has got the mid heaven on the uranus chronos midpoint um that might that might indicate hold on let me put up his solar arc direction again so if he's got his mid heaven aspecting the uranus chronos midpoint well, you know what's that about chronos is about authority it's about government um uranus is about um it's about revolution it's about changing government um it's about what government is doing um the transformations that governments can can bring about and so with the he's got this in his chart anyway all the time and so with the sun applying to the semi square this is suddenly really worrying for him i think um i, I think that uh i think right now obama is concerned about the way things are going and i think over the next year he's going to become increasingly concerned uh, it may be something to do with his legacy um now as far as his um solar return charts um are concerned so his last birthday was um was it obviously august 2023 so here is his solar return for his last birthday um so his last birthday you know, I, I, when I set up solar returns, I set my solar returns up for place of birth. And I know that some people like to set their solar returns up for where someone is when the birth, when the birth, when the solar return takes place. This is what I do. Um, uh, that's my approach. Um, I'm not saying that solar returns set for where you are don't mean anything i just think that in terms of fate um, we do have to consider the solar return set for the place you're born um so in his august 2023 solar return he had um uranus um on the ic uh, that's um that's quite in quite unsettling i uh, know there was a i think that there was a he had a cook who drowned, isn't that right? Um, and when was the drowning? I think I think the solar the drown who drowned was it somewhere close to where he was uh, to his house or something like that. I can't remember the details. I did talk about it in a video when it happened, um, but uh, that might reflect uh, the fact that uh, he's got um, Mars on the eighth house cusp um uh in his solar return and maybe the uranus on the ic is about the sort of instability um of um you know what's going on i think yeah i think the drowning happened after his birthday um rather than before but uranus on the ic it's it's an unsettling time for him um and uh notice um how in this solar return um he has got uh, sun exactly on the, on on the descendant um a powerful solar return but he may feel 
a little bit out of control. You know, if the sun is on a descendant, that means that other people um, are making the decisions and maybe he doesn't like that. Um, um, I don't know how he's relating to Michel with um, the sun on the seventh house cusp in his um, in his 2023 um, solar return. Um, then let's move forward to the 2024 solar return. Um, the 2024 solar return, this will be the solar, the solar return just a couple of months before the presidential election. Um, now, what I find really interesting about the solar, the solar return is it happens on the day of a new moon. You can see the sun and the moon are pretty much exactly there. So the new moon is, takes place, what, half an hour after his solar return? Uh, so if you have a new moon on your solar return and that new moon is exactly on the IC, on the IC on an angle, this is an important this is an important solar return for him. And you've got Uranus on an angle here as well. Um, um, that this is um, this could herald um, quite a destabilizing year for him. Um, a year when um, does he have to start again? Uh, does he have to start some new project? But you know, I think there's going to be a big disturbance here for Obama after his next birthday, after his sixty-third birthday. Um, so you know, something's going on. I think which is going to bother him. And you know, back to this question about you know, is is um, Obama? Um, de facto leader of the uh, leader of the democrat party i don't know he probably isn't i don't think he is but i'm thinking that looking at what's going on in his life and how given he's an ex-president and given he's relatively young for an ex-president i think events going on right now are bringing him back into the center um i, I don't think this is just about his business i think he feels a need to um probably feels that he has to make him make his opinions felt um, and use whatever influence uh, influence he has um, and I want to finish by looking at his Vedic chart you know um, you know Vedic astrology is to be honest uh, it's quite hit and miss um, with Vedic astrology you know you can make serious mistakes with Vedic, astro Vedic astrology you but it can be extremely accurate um, but you have to be careful. You know, Vedic astrology is like, um, you know, a very powerful machine or um, like a, an expensive sports car or whatever. Yeah, it's great, but you can completely mess it up. Um, and so um, that that is an issue um, with Vedic astrology. But uh, let's just look at his Vedic chart to see if this can um, give us any... Give us any indication about what's going on. Um, so um, remember, with the Vedic chart, everything goes back around 23, 24 degrees. Um, uh, so here is his Vedic chart. Um, so remember, I said he had the moon in Gemini. Well, in his Vedic chart, he has the moon in Taurus. Um, his moon in Taurus is, in his Vedic chart, is in many respects is absolutely fantastic. Um, it's, uh, you know, the moon is in Vedic astrology. It, its degree of maximum exaltation is three degrees, three degrees Taurus. His moon is at ten degrees Taurus, so it's only seven degrees off the, moon, the point of maximum maximum exaltation and it is in the fifth house and in Vedic astrology the fifth house is really fortunate um, it's 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 a house of Purva Punya which can be past life credit so all the good things you've done in previous incarnations if you believe in reincarnations uh, you know come back to you in in this incarnation um, so Moon is in a really, really good position here. Um, now, Vedic astrology, as I have um, said on quite a few occasions, it, it divides life up into nine discrete p 
periods. Um, and if you add all those nine discrete periods together, it comes to 120 years. So if everything goes, goes well, we live to 120 years, which at the moment humans seem to, you know, at the you know, at the the maximum, you know, we stop, you know, by 120, we die. Um, you know, that's, that's when humans, that's an absolute limit so far of, of human, of, of human longevity. Okay. I know people talk about exceptions. I don't know people living 130 or 150 years, but you know, 120 is, is the limit. And of course, um, I believe Moses lived to 120. Isn't that right? Uh, I think, um, uh, so um, I think yeah I think there are in the Old Testament 120 um, comes up um, uh, and of course the Old Testament has got nothing to do with Indian astrology um, so we've got these nine periods and in uh, July 2012 um, Obama entered his Saturn period now, Saturn in Obama's chart is actually quite well placed because you can see that he's got Saturn um, in he's got Saturn in Capricorn. S Saturn rules Capricorn, and Saturn is conjunct Jupiter. So Jupiter strengthens Saturn. Um, I, I would have said. Um, so this Saturn period of his life lasts from 2012 to 20, 2031. So it lasts for 19 years. And he's right in the middle of it. Now, if you remember, he was elected to his first term in 2008. And then in 2012, he was up against Mitt Romney. Um, and he beat Mitt Romney. Um, you know, I remember 2012, it was absolutely obvious that Obama was going to win. Um, it, then it was clear he was going to win. I, astrologically, probably politically as well. Um, so it started well, uh, this Saturn period um, for Obama. But, but you know, we have this 19 year large period, but we have these sub periods and you can see all the sub periods. We can see Saturn, 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 Mercury, Saturn, Ketu, that's the south node, Saturn, Venus, Saturn, Sun and so forth. Until finally we end and we move to the next period, which is Mercury. Um, so. Not surprisingly, he did well with when his Saturn period started 2015 he moved from saturn saturn to saturn mercury and um it was in the 215 period from 2015 to 2018 that arguably his legacy was suddenly threatened because in that it was in that period um that uh, that donald trump um got elected um, you know, think of all Donald Trump's attempts to destroy the Affordable Care Act. He did everything to do everything. He threw everything at it to try to destroy Obama's legacy. Um, in that case, um, he failed. Um, but uh, so Saturn, there's there's Saturn in uh, Obama's chart. And then Mercury's opposition uh, Saturn. Um, so these two planets are in opposition. And so it's not surprising that in this second period from 2015 to 2018, you know, his legacy was um, was threatened um, by um, by Trump's victory. Now, what period is he in at the moment? So if you look at his chart, June 27th, 2023, he moved into the Saturn major period and the moon sub period so that's what he's in right now and so the moon as i just said he's got a fantastic moon um and so there's his saturn on the ascendant moon in the fifth house 
so I think that from um, June of this year, I think things are things are kind of looking good. Okay, I talked about you know the fact that there was that tragic drowning and 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 so forth, but uh, he is in a strong position. Um, you know, he's and. I would guess he's using his strong position or will be about to use his position, his strong position to try to have an influence on the political process. Um, I mean, why not? And, you know, he's he started this Saturn, the Saturn Dasha started in 2012 and Saturn in the first house. You know, Saturn is a tough, disciplined planet in the, in Capricorn. It's actually quite political and so his involvement with politics i don't think is going to end when he didn't end when he became president when he when he stopped being president and arguably it's going to go right through this whole saturn dasha uh, you could argue and um, you know there'll be ups and downs like saturn mahadasha main dasha mercury sub dasha that's when his legacy got threatened by donald winning but now his things are looking up because uh, Saturn in the Mahadasha, the moon, the Subdasha, this is a time where, where he is being listened to. And it's probably also the fact that, you know, with Biden's cognitive, you know, cognitive decline. And I think there is a view that Biden at this stage is pretty useless. Um, um, it's, it's kind of not surprising that this is a time where I think he is really able to assert himself. And I think, you know, again, going back to that question, is he de facto leader of the Democrats? But Democrats, OK, I don't think he is. But I think he is in a position where he can have a great deal of influence. So then there's a question of how long does this period where he can be successful and influential last for? OK, in a broad sense, until 2030. But but as he goes through these subdashes, you're gonna see you're gonna see his his sort of influence go up and down, up and down, and so forth. And so we notice that uh, January of twenty sixth, twenty twenty five, his Saturn Moon period ends, and he moves into a Saturn Mars period. Um, now, January the twenty sixth, twenty twenty five. Now that is within what, five days of um, the new president? So we've got, we're going to have a new president. OK, it might be Joe Biden. Uh, might be his second term, but it might be someone else. Um, it seems that that's when there's going to be a big change for Obama. Um, the moment we get a new president, or even indeed the moment that Biden... Um, is going to be, you know, if, you know if, assuming he seriously, is he really going to be be around then? Is he going to get a second term? I don't know. But uh, uh, again, I should know. But I'm not in this video. My my, I, I don't want to predict who's going to win the who's going to win the election. I'm beginning to get a feel for it, but I don't. I didn't want to want to go into that right here, right here. Um, the thing is that. Saturn, Mars, look at the relationship between Saturn and Mars. In his natal chart, he has Mars in the eighth house. Um, Mars doesn't, uh, doesn't really work too well um, in the eighth house. Um, it's, I mean, it's, it, it it could be unfortunate. So Mars and Mars is in the eighth house from Saturn. So I'm thinking that um, his luck is going to take a plunge and his power is going to take a plunge um, at the end of January 2025. And so I think that as a result of the new president, I think his this influence that he's had 
suddenly he's going to lose all his influence. He's going to have no political influence whatsoever. I think that's going to happen. And certainly he's going to have a period of over a year, longer than that. I, I think, in, in fact, from 20, 2025, sorry, from 2025 to 2029, for that four years, um, he's going to be, um, he's, he's not going to have the power that he has now. Um, uh, I, I do think he does have some power. I do think he is having some influence on the political process. And uh, this will continue and probably get stronger because I think he feels he really does have to assert himself. But I think, um, um, I think when we, when, uh, when we hit the end of January 2025, probably a new president. Um, that's when everything will change. OK, those are my views on Obama. Um, you know, I'm, I, it's all a bit speculative, um, but uh, I thought I wanted to have another look at his chart. I mean, he's got, he has got a great chart. I mean, particularly his Vedic chart. He's got an absolutely fantastic Vedic chart. Um you know, in retrospect, you know, that, that Vedic chart really got him into the White House. He, a very fortunate, he's got a very fortunate chart um, from a Vedic perspective. Um, his Vedic chart has worked well in the past and maybe it's going to work well um, in the future. I mean, work well in terms of accurately showing what's going on um, in his in his life. Um, by the way, the final um, sub-period, 2029 to 2031 Saturn and Jupiter that could be major really major 2029 and I'm could be very good could be very bad I w I'd like to give it some more thought um, okay so um, that's that's all I'm going to say about Obama um, thank you thank you for uh, thank you for listening um um have a happy happy boxing day um and i should say if you've enjoyed this video um feel feel free to like it um if you're not subscribed and you did enjoy this video then consider subscribing and uh if you want to buy me a coffee there is a link in the description thank you for thanks thanks again for listening and i will talk to you again tomorrow